Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Zia, I'm a clinical psychologist specializing in transgender care. Welcome to my channel. Today I want to talk to you about gender identity crisis, what constitutes gender crisis, and two most common age groups that tend to fall into gender crisis. Now I know that a lot of you who are watching are thinking that, well, wouldn't anything, uh, in a sense of anybody who uh, is questioning their gender identity, will fall into a category of gender crisis. And I would argue and say that not necessarily. The difference being is that if you've been aware of your gender incongruency, uh, perhaps either at a very young age or maybe when you went through puberty, um, as a result of being aware, you were continuously carrying an essence of gender dysphoria throughout your life and into your adulthood. Meaning by caring that you've been thinking about it, you've been uh, cognitively aware that you're not resonating with your gender assigned at birth. Now, you may not have been ready or equipped to have done anything about it in a sense of a gender transition and coming out and doing things such as uh, as those, uh, but you definitely would have been thinking about it. Um, in other words, you've been really aware that you don't identify with your gender, uh, maybe even aware to the extent of knowing you have gender dysphoria, to the extent of knowing you are transgender, maybe even taking steps to do something about it. That's a little bit different than what I call gender crisis. Gender crisis, in my opinion, are individuals, are people, and I'll share with you two age groups that tend to fall into that category consistently, are individuals who um, perhaps have been aware in younger at younger age, uh, but given the circumstances and given the environment, they had to repress their feelings. And as a result of repression, the repression has been um, almost keeping a tight lid on their gender identity for a quite duration of their time. And as a result, these individuals have been uh, living into their adulthood, um, maybe even some of you, even in the older age, and had some kind of sense that something is just not right, had some kind of sense that things don't feel exactly in alignment. Uh, you can't exactly name those things. You're not exactly aware what they are. Uh, gender dysphoria is not even something that exists in your vocabulary yet. Um, but your feelings that something is off, you can see that something is off in terms of maybe your intimate relationship, or maybe you're feeling something is off in terms of your relationship with other people and how you relate. You notice things that you tend to maybe relate differently. Gender crisis for these individuals is when suddenly the defense mechanisms that you have employed in order to hold the depression at place, to hold the tight lid in place on your gender dysphoria, suddenly goes off. When it suddenly goes off, usually the way you experience gender crisis phenomenon is as if a switch went off. And one day you wake up and suddenly you are having a realization a very deep awareness that you're struggling with gender incongruency. And you having realization and you having a very deep awareness that um, you're not in alignment and not comfortable with your gender. As a result of this realization, as a result of a lid going off, you may also start looking back into your childhood and you're starting to suddenly see these little threats that indicate or... Um, uh, kind of like historic um, signposts that are uh, indications that probably the issues had been there all along. But in other words, this gender crisis is a phenomenon when things happen and shift for you almost overnight, and it feels very drastic. So that's the difference between people who are dealing with gender dysphoria and cognizant that they have it, but they're trying to deal with it, um, or try to maybe even avoid dealing with it versus people who are almost like at a, I call it sleepwalking state. You're sleepwalking through the life like a zombie, something is off, you don't know what it is, you can't name it, and then suddenly, you know, the light goes on and you're able to see yourself and you realize it is gender issue. And as a result, you're having identity crisis because here you are, and you're an adult and this is happening to you and it is very scary. It is very terrifying for people who are having phenomenon of gender crisis versus people who are self-aware and aware about gender dysphoria and are dealing with it. Because it, that repression, the fact that we can repress as human beings something for that long can be very terrifying. 
the two most common groups of people who I see struggle with gender crisis are the following. Group number one, age 30 up to age 40. Why age 30 up to age 40? Uh, usually developmentally. Age 30, well, let me backtrack, developmentally. Age 20 to 30 is a time period in adult life where we are most likely trying to figure out what to do with our lives in terms of career. A lot of people are age 20 to 30, that's the time when people uh, invest in going to trade school, going to college, um, figuring out what to do. Some people start businesses. It is more type of money, financially driven time of period in people's lives. Um, this is when people start adulting because it's right after the high school, right? You finish high school around age 18. And so uh, a lot of times that's when your adulting, so to speak, starts. So part of the adulting, the biggest part of the adulting responsibility is being able to take care of your basic necessities, basic needs, such as shelter, uh, such as food, um, and things like that. So as a result, you are preoccupied by thinking about those things. How do I make money? How do I make a living? What to do for a living? Uh, what should I do? Where should I uh, invest my time? So that's a big chunk of preoccupation happens between age 20 and 30, relatively speaking. Age 30 up to 40, roughly speaking, is a developmental stage that I have witnessed in adults when now that you have kind of settled, you know, some kind of career wills have been put in place. Some of people have already figured out exactly what they want to do with their lives. Suddenly, this is now an interpersonal awareness of a sense of self. Interpersonal meaning now you're starting to question, who am I? How do I want to be in this world? What does life mean to me? How do I want to live this life? Because this is such a period of deeper introspection, this is when, if you have gender dysphoria that has been repressed, this is why the lid may go off for you. Because all of this introspection and all of this wondering, who am I and what do I want to do in my life and how do I want to see myself, is going to lift that lid. Whereas age 20 to 30, for a lot of people that have repressed material, the lid is going to stay relatively tight. Why? Because you are preoccupied uh, with all of these other things. You're not introspecting deep enough yet. For age 30 and up, if you're introspecting, and most likely people are, this is when we start to wonder, what is the meaning of life? What, do I, what am I really meant to do? Who am I? Uh, a lot of people in that age end up being in relationships. Sometimes they end up getting um, married or a long domestic relationship. And as a result of being in a relationship with another person, you question those things. It's just inevitable and natural. So this is group, age group number one, for whom crisis I see happen. I have a lot of adults that I see in my practice who come to see me, age 30 and up, who express the same thing again and again. Um, I suddenly woke up and I had this deep awareness and I'm freaking out and I don't know what to do. Age group number two to whom gender crisis tends to happen are people, I would say, 55 and all the way up. Why 55 and up? Now we're looking at a completely different developmental uh, group of individuals. Well, people 55 and up, a lot of times tend to also repress their gender dysphoria for a long, long time. Suddenly, when we, there's something about numerically as human beings, um, where we're almost programmed to think that uh, the scope, the lifespan of, of human longevity is 100 years. Uh, we know that people live beyond 100 years, but there's something about us being programmed that when we think we hit 50 mark, we live half of our lives. There's a lot of birthday cards, there's a lot of memes, there's a lot of um, uh, th those types of phrasings that um, once you hit 50, you live half of your life. So when people hit age 50 and up or 55 and up, there's also becomes now a different type of a deeper realization. You start having almost like an existential, um, existential introspection into life at large. What is the point of all of this? Um, what are my regrets? Uh, what do I really want to do since I have half of my lifetime? Remember, we're looking at this as half and half, half of my lifetime left. What do I want to do now for with the rest of my life? So you're starting to have this existential wandering. And because you're having this existential wandering, that's also is going to bring up the lid of repression 
that you had on your gender dysphoria. And as a result, I see a lot of people having crisis as well, where they come to me and they're past their 50s and they're freaking out because they say, how could have I possibly repressed this for so long? And now I'm wondering what's going on. And sometimes people ask me, is this just some kind of middle-age crisis? And the answer is no. Listen, nobody has middle-age crisis where they think they need to go and change their gender. That That's just, that's ridiculous. I'm sure that's such a stupid idea. Um, and it's so extreme. It's far easier to have middle-age crisis where you think you're getting older and you need to go and you need to maybe... Um, have plastic surgery to make yourself look better. Maybe you need to go and buy a new sports car to feel useful. Um, those are all different, way different things um, versus something such as drastic as thinking you want to change your gender. So no, it's not a middle age crisis. What's happening is that the lid you've been holding on on your um, gender dysphoria for that long time as a repression has suddenly come off. So those are the two groups that I see again and again statistically having what I call gender crisis. Again, gender crisis is when you feel like you have not been having this awareness at all, but felt something was off. And then suddenly, almost overnight, you feel like you have this tremendous sense of awareness, this tremendous sense of, holy shit, uh, this is really happening. So... Be mindful if you are in that age group and that happened to you. This is just depression. Um, this is just your your psyche perhaps defending you and protecting you. And maybe there's a reason for that. A lot of times I see in adults, if it has been repressed for that long, there's so usually a reason for it. It could be that they were in an environment where they just couldn't do anything about it. And subconsciously they knew, and that's why they repressed it. So there's always a benefit psychologically why we as human beings do or engage in certain tactics or in certain behaviors. So comment below, let me know, have you experienced gender crisis? Um, do you fall into this age category? What was it like for you? Was it terrifying? Was it scary? How did you make sense of it? Um, it's very common. I have people ask me all the time uh, because it's such a freak out state, meaning it's so terrifying, so scary. That a lot of people really have a freak out moment and then they wonder um, what's happening almost like a rock has been pulled underneath their feet and now the loss are footing. So comment below, let me know if you experienced this and I'll see you all next time. Bye.